Hello. Dreams, they say, are but pigments of our subconscious imagination. But sometimes they seem so real. We wonder about these strange machinations of the mind. Are they just dreams? Lights out. Fiction magazine? Well, this is Joe Morgan. I'd like to speak to Mr. Chambers, please. Oh, yes. Hello, Jeff. This is Joe Morgan. Oh, hello, Joe. Say, uh, Jeff, that story in your October issue, A Grain of Sand, what do you know about the author, Frank Joyce? Do I know him? <laughs> I doubt it, Joe. Why? Well, I'd like to talk to you about it. Well, what's it all about? Oh, it's nothing I can talk about over the phone. Well, can't it wait until tomorrow? Well, not till then, huh? Well, I'm sorry, Joe. I'm all tied up. Let's make it tomorrow at two. Oh. Well, okay, Jeff. I'll see you tomorrow then. Goodbye. Morgan's here for his two o'clock appointment. Oh, that's right. Well, send him right in. Yes. Oh, and bring me all the dope we have on Frank Joyce and uh, also his manuscript. I'll bring you the file, sir, but the manuscript's right there. Oh, thank you. Oh, hello, Joe. Hello, Jeff. Sit down. Thanks. Now, what's this all about? There we are. Thanks. What's up? Take a look at this. They're identical. Well, what's your name doing on the manuscript? It belongs there. I wrote it. Are you trying to say Joyce stole your story? Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? Say, what are you trying to pull? I'll take it easy, Jeff. I'm not going to sue you. Joyce didn't steal that story. Well, then it hasn't what... been out of my file since I wrote it four years ago. But how do you explain this? I don't know. It's just... One of those strange coincidences. One a million to one shot, I guess. Fantastic. Jeff. Look, I've got to talk to this Frank Joyce. I've got to find out how it's possible for one man to write a story so much like mine 
that it could be a carbon copy. I've got to talk to Frank Joyce. Come on in. Have any trouble finding the apartment? Trouble? No, I recognized it immediately. Oh, you did? Then you know this street. I've never been on this street in my life. Oh, won't you sit down? I'm afraid that chair isn't very comfortable. Oh, you mean the broken spring? That's right. Would you like a drink? What do you say? Can I fix you a drink? Well, fine, yes. Scott? Uh, on the rocks. I'll get some ice. I'm flattered that you like my story, Morgan. I've been reading your stuff for years. It's swell. Your story, A Grain of Sand, was very interesting. First thing of mine that's ever been published. Do you much writing? Well, not as much as I like. You see, I'm married and... Well, I have to make my living as a draftsman. Between the two, it doesn't leave me much time for writing. If I didn't have a wife, I could spend more time at it. You married, Morgan? No. You're lucky. How come? Well, I guess I never found the right girl. <laughs> Tell me something, Morgan. Do you usually uh, look up the writers whose work you happen to like? No, this is the first time. Tell me, Joyce. When did you write this story? Oh, about six months ago. Did it take long? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, one night I sat down at the typewriter, and when I got up there, it was. The words just seemed to pour out as if I'd memorized them. Yes, of course. What do you mean, of course? You usually have to rewrite something of mine about ten times before it begins to look like anything. Look, take a look at this. Oh, one of your stories? Yeah, I wrote it about four years ago. Go ahead, read the first couple of paragraphs. Well, this is my story, Morgan. Yes, I know, but it's my story, too. Are you saying that I stole this story? No, I'm just saying that it's my story, too. It's exactly like mine. I know, that's why I'm here. Well, I don't get it. Well, neither do I. Oh, I know you couldn't steal a story, Joyce. Nobody's ever seen it but me. It's impossible. No two stories written by two different people could be so identical. Well, it's exactly like mine, word for word, paragraph for paragraph. All right, it's a gag, isn't it? No, it's no gag. Look at the manuscript paper. You can see it's old. All right, how do you account for it? Well, I don't know. At first, I thought maybe it was one of those freaks, you know, just a uh -huh. coincidence that happens once in centuries. But now that I've been here... Yeah, what about it? Well, this story is no coincidence. It's, it's part of a larger pattern. It's this apartment, this place. <laughs> this apartment in place? Yes, I've seen them many times. <laughs> but you just said you've never been on this street before. Yes, that's right. But both the apartment and this street. I've seen them hundreds of times in my dreams. It's, I feel as though I'd lived here all my life. Uh, it's too unbelievable, Joel. First this story, then the apartment. No wonder Joyce thought it was a gag. It's a good thing you didn't mention his wife. You don't believe me either. I want to, Joel, but this is... Too hard to take. Well, it didn't make sense to me at first either, but well, after thinking it over for a week, I... I'm sure I have the answer now. Well, if what you've told me is true, how can there be an answer? Look, Jeff. Do you know what a doppelganger is? Doppelganger? Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a German pastry. Sorry, it's a kind of a supernatural projection of a person, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. But you left out one important element. You see, whatever one does affects the other. It's it's sort of a spiritual image of himself. That's witch stuff, Joe. You call it what you like, Jeff. That's it. Joe, you're tired. You better go home. Get some sleep. Sleep? I don't dare sleep. I've been sitting on benzodine for the last four days to keep awake. Why don't you dare sleep? Because if I sleep, I'll dream. And whatever I dream happens to Frank Joyce. It happens with uncanny consistency. Well, what of it? Look, suppose some guy moved into your apartment stole your girl, what would you feel? You're forgetting one thing, Joe. That's not your apartment or your girl. You only dreamed them. Yes, but long before I had them. That's why I feel he stole them. 
just like he stole that story, and I hate him for it. Joe, you're upsetting yourself about a lot of nonsense. Nonsense? You call it nonsense when the life of a man hangs in a dream you might have? I don't want to be his murderer. His murderer? Yes. Well, how could but you... supposing be... I dream of death, would Frank Joyce die? Joe, I... I think you're losing your mind. And if he would die, would I be his murderer? It's fantastic. It happened before. It can happen again. That's why I don't know how long I can continue to stay awake. I can't sleep. But if I do sleep, what will I dream? This is only a coincidence. A reoccurring fantasy. That's all it is. Believe me. Joe, that's all it is. Believe me. Morgan, what do you want? May I come in? I've got to go to work. Look, it's very important. Okay, come in. All right, what is it this time? More dreams? Yes. Look, Morgan, I'm getting sick of this. The choice, where do you work? The Anvil Building. Why? Does that building have a white front? And, and is there a gargoyle carved over the archway leading into the lobby? Gargoyle? Yes. No, there isn't. Hey, is that what you came here for? What's the idea? Listen, I'm trying to save your life. Now, look, Morgan, I'm getting tired of this crummy dream gag. Why don't you leave me alone? Well, I wish I could, but I can't. Look, I, whether you like it or not, whatever I dream happens to you. <laughs> it's very flattering. Before anything can happen to me, you've got to dream about it first. Hey, you don't think much of yourself, Oh, well, that's you? unimportant. Now, please believe me. Okay, Morgan, I've got to go. Come on. Look, I haven't told you everything yet. I haven't told you about your wife, Angela. She's part of my dreams, oh, too. Oh, get out Listen, of my way. Wait a minute, Joyce. Please believe me. There's a strange affinity between us. I don't know what it is, but it works with some kind of a terrible intensity. Everything. This this street, this apartment, your wife, this story. Uh -oh. Listen, please, please, Joyce. I'm trying to save your life. 
Last night I had a dream. I dreamed I went into a white office building, and there was a gargoyle carved sort of on the archway leading into the lobby. When I tried to get into the elevator, a man stepped in front of me. He sort of stopped me. He cut me off. And then the elevator went up to the 15th floor. Then it started to drop. Slowly, oh, slowly, at first, then faster and faster. Please, Joyce, I'm trying to warn you. I guess you overheard what I said to your husband. I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. Have you seen me often in your dreams? Yes, very often. And for years. What do I do? You dance. It's strange how you used to feel about it. What else happens? I always lose you. What do you mean? Somebody manages to get to you before I do. Hmm? Oh, guess I'd better go, Mrs. Joyce. I... Sorry I made such a pest of myself and my crazy hallucinations. I guess I'm just working too hard. Why do you think they're crazy? Oh, I've been worrying about something that happens to everybody. You know, you see a house and you, you wonder why you recognize it. Everybody's had this experience. That's true, but what about this story? How do you explain that? What well, about me? You said you used to be a dancer. I guess I saw you someplace and remembered you. Well, I only danced on the West Coast. Were you ever there? No. But me... You're minimizing this just because you don't understand it. You mean to say you believe this? In some way, I do. But you heard your husband. He said he works in the Anvil Building. They don't have any carved gargoyle in the Anvil Building. There's something he didn't tell you, though. He's going to another building today. Where? I'm not sure. It's uh, to see a publisher about Which him. publisher? Addison. Addison and Swift? That's it. What are you doing? I'm going to call Addison and Swift. What time's his appointment? 11 o'clock. Hello, Addison and Swift. What building are you in, please? Oh, I see. Well, no, I had a bet with someone, and I just wondered whether the front of your building was white and if there was a carved gargoyle over the arch leading into the lobby. Oh, I see. Frank, don't go in there. <laughs> no, because this nut says so. Uh... Listen, you fool, I'm trying to keep you from killing yourself. <laughs> don't, Joyce, I'm warning you. This is it. Going up, Alpha. Please, Frank, don't go in there. of one person into a spiritual image of himself. Hmm. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> 